your teams. The heart of Ohio. Valley Sports Ohio. The heart of the fan. American Ballpark, Riverside in Cincinnati. The Reds and Pirates meet up game two of their three game set after a back and forth battle last night, put into perspective by Reds outfielder TJ Free. That was a back and forth draining game for both sides. I mean, we had every opportunity. Um, you know, our, it, we just put ourselves in good situations and just, you know, we hit them, they hit back. And it was one of those games, it was back and forth. You know, we're going to continue to get out there every day, continue to show up every single day. Like, we're still in the hunt. This doesn't change anything. This doesn't change our mentality at all. There's still what, seven games left. Disappointment, yes, but resolved focus as well. Welcome back to Reds Baseball. A pleasant good evening to you. John Sadak alongside our Hall of Famer, the captain, Barry Larkin. And uh, Friedel probably had the best game of any Red last night. And I also thought he brought a mature perspective. He did, and I think this is something that he brings to this ball club every single day. It was impressive what he was able to do with the bat, really kind of willing this team to try to try to make it happen. You know, he had a big two-run home run right here. But I think the thing that's been most impressive about T.J. Friedel is obviously his hustle and his determination. He was on base five times yesterday, but what he did was made a few ground balls when he was on base that would have been out at second base. He made them fielder's choices. He arrived before the ball got there and extended innings. This guy brings it. He brings it every single day, and they need all need to play with this kind of reckless abandon. And even facing a left-handed starter today, he will be in the lineup for the Reds while on the mound for Cincinnati, coming off his best big league performance, Connor Phillips. Yeah, I think Connor Phillips against the Twins really set the tone early. He went after the hitters. This was a must-win situation last time he was out there. We're in the same situation again where we got to win this ball game. But he set the tone early. It was the fastball as well as the sweeper. He was dominant. He already has a dated headshot. The clean-shaven look was employed, and I think that'll be repeated tonight for Connor Phillips. We'll step aside for break, but we're back. Jim Day on the way for a look at the Pirate Pop. Their offense has yielded massive results in recent days. The details when we're back. A wide range of salaried managerial and operational roles. Apply today at joindhl.com. By Chevrolet, the number one selling brand in Cincinnati. And by Skyline Chili, feeling good. It's Skyline time. Running out of season. And if you look at the National League wild card situation, the Cubs have already put a win on the board over the Rockies today. That one hurts. Marlins have just taken the lead over the Brewers on a wild pitch. Diamondbacks and Yankees postponed with that tropical storm moving through. So as we sit right now, the Reds two games back on the outside looking in. There are very few tomorrows. In fact, I would say there are no tomorrows. You need to win tonight. And they need to hold back a Pirates offense that has caught life. They played well at Wrigley. They played well here last night. The Pirates scoring runs. It's our Hyundai into the driver's seat as the Pirates are in that driver's seat. During a three-game winning streak, 9.3 runs per game. Team average 310. Eight home runs, including four solo shots here last night. 16 walks in their on-base percentage, 402. They are not an easy out as we found this season. The Reds against National League Central Division foes. It has not gone the Reds way. They hope to turn it around here tonight. It's game two of a three game set. It's the second to last home game of the regular season. Ready for a win? We hope so. John and Barry are next. Fresh off his best showing in the big leagues. Ramps it up. A game of big import against the Pirates. The Reds need every win they can get with seven to play on the regular season. Breakdown on his first three outings, courtesy of Western and Southern. Well, it's been amazing to see how these young guys have been able to contribute, and you can see Connor Phillips 
in his opportunity he's taken full advantage. His last outing I thought was obviously his best by the numbers but it was his mound presence. It, it was him pitching early in the count getting ahead early throwing all of his pitches for strikes. He's been impressive. Uh, these young kids have been so impressive. 14 of 20 games played so far in September started by rookies and that's amazing in a pennant stretch. Keep doing what you're doing. Go out there compete win a ball game today. Lineup that he opposes Pirates have won three in a row four of five full nine brought to you by Rally House Josh Palacios has shown distinct power over the last month he'll be at right field Brian Reynolds key Brian Hayes hit one of the quartet of homers for the Pirates yesterday Jack Sawinski Jared Triolo Andy Rodriguez a bomb in yesterday's opener Alfonso Rivas series debut G Juan Bay is a bunt threat and has great speed and Williams. David Bell squad has dropped three in a row four of five. The deficit has swollen to two and the Cubs victorious already today as they chase a wild card spot. Derek Shelton's team already double digit wins above and beyond last year's performance gleefully playing the role of spoiler against its divisional brethren. Phillips pounds the fastball strike one. And Palacios from Brooklyn New York was drafted by the Reds out of high school in 2014 a 31st rounder with the Juco route then went to Auburn. He has hit some big homers of late. Oh two on Thursday ninth inning a pinch hit three run bomb against the Cubs that gave the cushion of a four run margin they needed it David Bednar gave up a couple of runs in the bottom half of the final inning Pirates held on and won it swing it similar to how his day started against the twins and his dominant outing last time. Being aggressive early, going with that fastball. Nice start. Brian Reynolds aboard three times yesterday. Base hit, walk in, hit by pitch. He has been on base in 21 consecutive games. Just low. If Phillips pitched with such conviction and confidence in his outing on a Monday. We saw much crisper command that day than the first two, particularly the fastball at the top and bottom of the zone. Yes. Four pitch walk. Reds defense with the lefty going for the Pirates. Nick Senzel gets the start in left. Friedel and Stuart Fairchild in right. On the infield, Marte de la Cruz, India, Steer, and Stevenson. T. Brian Hayes, two hits, including a home run yesterday. That swing tells the tale some Lark Phillips seems to have a little more carry on that fastball it plays even beyond the high 90s velo. Yeah we call that right he's got he does have good finish on that that fastball and that's why it's such an effective pitch when that ball is thrown up in the zone it has a tendency to not drop. So you see that ball close to your eyes as a hitter and you're expecting it to be at a certain level it doesn't come down to that level. Soft up swing and miss second strikeout for Phillips. Just a breaking ball flat breaking ball didn't have much to it. 
chasing a bad pitch right there. Jack Sawinski, he's got plenty of power, 25 home runs. Just missed. And both teams used a lot of players yesterday off their benches and out of their bullpens. Swinski entered as a pinch runner, added a sack fly in the ninth inning. Ball for Phillips. <laughs> Border line up. Now Sawinski can be pitchable, low average despite the big power. He generally does not swing at pitches out of the zone. He has one of the better chase rates in the baseball, letting those ones go by. <laughs> Swing and a miss. Three Ks for Phillips in a scoreless first. Zell Spencer Steer. CES again in the cleanup spot. He's been hot. Tyler Stevenson, Noel V. Marte is scorching. TJ Friedel, Stuart Fairchild gets the nod at right. Ellie De La Cruz. It's the second matchup this season for the Reds against the now Pirates Southpaw, Western and Southern on Bailey Falter. 26 year old left handed pitcher. He's got five pitches. Majority of his pitches are fastball. He throws a four seam fastball since about 91. There it is right there. Curveball slider. Sinker and a changeup. India 16 home runs on the year. Does find himself in an extended funk. In 10 games since coming back, he is four for 38. 14 strikeouts in that time. And yet Ribbies that helped the Reds in his first couple of games back has homered once since. And you can see bottom of the screen 0 for his last 16 his longest slide of the season. So he just may be due. Rolled slowly to third. Triolo one away. Pirate defense. They can cover ground. Brian Reynolds in left. Sawinski outstanding speed in center. Josh Palacios a strong arm. In right. The infield of Triola, Williams, May, Rivas, and Indy Rodriguez. The Reds were able to run on Rodriguez, who, as you pointed out early yesterday, had some fumbles on the transfer. Seemed to be sped up. Nick Senzel. Ball one. Hit 12 home runs in his first year in the big leagues. He has matched. That career high this year. Ryan sharply and off of the glove of Williams base hit. He continues to mash left handed pitching. Yeah, there's something to consistency. You know, you know what your role is on a team. You're not playing every single day, but you're getting your chance consistently when lefties are on the mound. And that's one thing David Bell has done for Nick Senzel. He's defined a role for him, he's been consistent in putting him in that role. And Nick, I think, is very comfortable swinging the bat well against lefties. Spencer Steer. Steer doubled last night. Scored one, struck out a couple of times. 34 doubles. It's tied for the most of all rookies. 
also leads all rookies in RBIs. Breaking ball turned on early. Steer has hit safely in seven consecutive games. A falter came to the Pirates from the Phillies, trade on August the 1st for infielder Rodolfo Castro. With Philly, it was not pretty. He was 0 7, ERA over 5. That includes a loss here in Cincinnati to the Reds back in April. Five runs, eight hits. He failed to go five innings. He's been much better as a pirate. ERA in the high threes. His record two up and two down. Senzel a decent lead draws a look. One two. Swing appeal, he went. Curve ball, first strikeout for Falter. Christian Encarnacion Strand. Base hit a walk, bounced it of a double play last night. Loaded swing and a hard foul. Last 17 games for CES. Five of his nine homers, 11 of his 27 RBIs. Senzel fakes a start. Soft down. Falter has inverted splits. Now the Reds load their lineup with right handed bats today. But both this season and lifetime, lefties have hit him better for average and power than righties. Well, you look at his delivery and you look at he's pretty much over the top, and there isn't much deception from a lefty perspective. You would expect a guy like a Sam Maul or Hater, Josh Hader, someone that throws from Chris Sale, someone that throws from like really on the first base side of that rubber. Now the divide is not as significant in his career as it is this year, but the average is still 30 points better lifetime for lefties, 290 to 260. And you can make the argument you saw the difference in the number of at bats. The lefties that he's facing are lefties that you would assume see lefties well or are everyday hitters for their respective teams and really, really good hitters. But I, I think that's an excellent observation on the idea of the, the lack of deception from Falter. He's been very aware of Sinzel. Driven to right. Palacios looks up. That's long gone. Double digit dingers for Christian Encarnacion Strand. He is.
is the 11 red to launch 10 or more bombs. That is a new franchise record. John, this was all about strength and power. This ball was up and out. I don't know if this ball was a strike, but it was up and out, and he got that bad hit to that ball in a hurry. That ball was destroyed. He went full Drago. Elevated strike at Tyler Stevenson. Consider June 1st, the Reds had the second fewest homers in the big leagues. And now they have that diverse array of home run hitters, several of whom have only been with the club on the last third or less of the season. Stevenson cracks one to left center. All the way back to the wall, and that's gone! A dozen for Stevenson. Back to back, two out homers. Three nothing. Hanging breaking ball right there, Tyler Stevenson. This is what he does. He sets up to drive this ball to right center field. And then if you hang a breaking ball, that's the ball he pulls to left center. Very well done. Got to feel good. Noel V. Marte, you know, the Viking helmet, now being passed around like a party favor. Everybody getting in on the act. Marte rides a 10 game hit streak on the base of 16 consecutive games. Sets a center. Sawinski back. Just shy of the track. Well, they brought the big sticks today. Boys need to step up and score some runs. Three spot in the first inning. Couple of finals today. Cubs rallied from down 3 1. They topped the Rockies. Brewers fall. Joel Pyam's wild pitch, the difference. Marlins take it 5 to 4. Diamondbacks, Yankees wiped out. So the Reds two games out. Overall, and in the loss from the Cubs. All David DeBell's team can do is try to win. Stake to a three run edge after one. Connor Phillips faces Jared Triolo. Triolo two hits. He homered and walked a couple of times yesterday. Two of his three homers have come at the expense of Reds pitching. Right at him with the fastball. A knowing nod. I thought the best version of Phillips Monday Lark was the confidence showed itself some in his pace. He was very catch and throw. He was in rapid agreement on sequencing and you could just feel flow emerging from his game. Yeah it seems like it seems like all these guys have I was thinking about Lion Richardson when you were talking about that a little bit different mm -hmm. but it's a very confident there's a mound presence about these young guys there's a there's a willingness and eagerness to get into the fight and there's no fear really attacking hitters and I think you know they all have their own pace and cadence but yes he's got a rhythm out there he's feeling confident his posture is attack sent to right routine for Fairchild one down. He is the subject of tonight's Kia player profile. So here are the averages each time through the lineup. It's based on three starts. First time through overwhelming. Second time it goes up. And this is somewhat in line with what everyone in the game endures to some extent. But I think we only just saw him. Hunter Green referred to 
his own last start is unlocking a new level. Phillips is just discovering who he is. Exactly. And it looks like just off the plate away to these lefties. He's might want to live there. It's <laughs> right. Andy Rodriguez can hit the high fastball. He homered in the game last night. They pitch him away on back to back heaters 0 and 2. The scouting report is high fastball with two strikes he can hit. So what does he do? Connor Phillips goes to the breaking ball. Good pitch. Alfonso Rivas. Right at him with the heat. Now David Bell when speaking of Phillips after his start on Monday. Said succinctly, you can see he has the stuff. You can see he has a competitive edge. That floats foul. He was the player to be named later in the Winker Suarez trade. What a find for Nick Kroll. Uh, they did their homework. Because that player to be named later isn't a one or a two. <laughs> this guy, the way that he's pitching. He's pitching like a one or a two. He's been ahead 0 2 on five of the seven he's faced. Rivas watches. And Phillips himself said after Monday, it comes down to getting ahead. Put guys away. Swing and a miss. Back to back strikeouts at five early on for an on fire Phillips. Already a hit for Stevenson. He went deep his first time up. Your turn. Head to the FanDuel app. Check out the odds. Create your own live same game parlay. TJ Fradel. Triolo on the grass at third. Strike one from Falter. Career first for Friedel last night. First time he reached base cleanly five times. He singled, launched a then critical go ahead two run homer, walked three times, scored a couple of runs, and stole a bank. That is last fair, and that's extra bases. Palacios after it. He's got a good arm. Friedel can run. He rips through second. Palacios lost the ball. Wave is on. Friedel is going. got to be a curtain call. Uh, I, I don't understand how we are not calling for a curtain call. That guy right there, TJ Friedel, has been absolutely amazing during this stretch run, entire season for that matter. That's the second time a Red has done something like that this year. The first is the man in the box, Stuart Fairchild, but that was technically a triple with an error. This is, as of now, scored a straight inside the park over for TJ Friedel. Wow. The greatest greatest way that you need to catch your breath on the baseball field is <laughs> send that ball into right and go all the way around.
Now yesterday the Reds fell in a back and forth game and I, I thought Friedel had the best point of view of the day. I thought he had the best perspective after the game. Sent to short caught on the fly. This young man has been so impressive. He hits the ball down the right field line and you're thinking double right away. And then you're looking to picking up your third base coach and you're saying OK now we're thinking triple. Well J.R. House kept saying let's go let's go. And he just keeps it in fifth gear. And scores easily inside the park home run. And there was such energy from the crowd last night despite a, a slower burn start a lot of pitches in the first few innings. And there is some buzz early tonight. Here's strike one and Ellie De La Cruz. The home runs were impressive yesterday but T.J. Friedel the thing that impressed me and I talked a little bit about it earlier was his. Aggressiveness. Atta boy. Opposite way. De La Cruz had been in a one for 31 slide facing a lefty batting right handed. He pokes a single. He hit that ball to right field. He let that ball travel. He worked through the baseball. That's a good swing right there. As I mentioned yesterday if he does those small things like that. Correct. He's going to be in such a position to allow his athletic ability to take over and he will be a superstar. But T.J. Frito the other day extended innings being that runner on base runner on balls that were going to be outs recorded. They were fielders choice safe because of his secondary lead and his aggressiveness extending innings just making things happen. It's been a magical year for him personally and obviously for this team. There goes De La Cruz pitch up and in throw down. Got it. He stole second and third yesterday. He takes second out of the gate tonight. A team high 32 swipes for number 44. Not a great jump but great speed. In there easily. Down to India 3 and 0. Oh. Called strike. There goes De La Cruz. Great jump. Pitch up. De La Cruz takes third. India gets first on a walk. Second straight day. De La Cruz swipes back to back bases. Ellie De La Cruz just simply gets on base. This kind of stuff is going to happen all year long. The dynamic speed of the Reds, impactful last night, wreaking havoc early tonight. The inside the parker for Friedel that sparked the inning. The first inside the park home run by a red in over a decade. Jay Bruce, June 15, 2012. That was in New York against the Mets. That was back when City Field was still enormous before the changes to bring everything closer. TJ Friedel is launching triples galore, now an inside the park homer in. One of the tiniest ballparks, one of the hardest to triple or hit it inside the park home run in. Senzel has singled, scored. He is 14 for his last 29 against lefties. Upstairs strike. His average against left Easton's coming back from triple A 483 with three homers. 
Hard ground ball right back to him. Flip to second. De La Cruz breaks for home. Later relay. Not in time. De La Cruz scores. It's five to nothing. I think the middle infield well, was just a bad throw back to the second baseman. This ball pulls him off. He has to get back to the bag, touch it. About that time, PFP, pitchers fielding practice. It's important. Sm small mistakes like that cost him a run. Steer struck out. Check swing appeal this first time. Five run lead for the Reds. Pure power in the three run first. Electric speed, the fuel in a two run second. In the air, down the left field line, foul English falls foul. Connor Phillips staying loose, watching and waiting. Hard ground ball. Stopped by Bay, that's all. Base hit steer. A nice play by G1 Bay. Talked about his speed and the ground that he covers. We saw him make an outstanding play in the outfield yesterday, playing center field. You see his range at second base as well. Put that glove on that shoulder. He may have hyperextended that shoulder a little bit. I see him kind of looks like he's trying to stretch it out a little bit. And Carnacion Strand got the scoring started. Two run homer opposite way. Broke his bat, little flare, hard break in Palacios. Does not get it cleanly. Runners went with two outs. Senzel scores, steer over to third, six zip. That's a base hit for Christian Encarnacion Strand. You saw the power of Encarnacion Strand this time. Ball off the label. Palacios made a nice play on him, but couldn't quite get there. Anytime a big fella takes a hack like that, he gets fisted. Normally don't see a good jump, but Palacio made a nice play on that. Strike one on Stevenson, who is homeward to left center. The six runs have already matched. The most falters allowed in any one outing on the season. Also ties his career high for runs allowed. It's now three times this year Giants, Cubs, and Reds. Also last year against the Braves. Oh. 
Set to right center. That finds gap. Base hit. Steer scores. Encarnacion strand. Furious windmill. Pay does not throw. He scores standing. Two run double for Stevenson. It's a five spot in the second inning. Eight nothing Reds. Talked about how Tyler Stevenson sets up to drive the ball to right center field. And that's right in his wheelhouse. And a good read by J.R. House. He sees Suwinski go down. And the big fella, Chris Encarnacion Strand, he can run, scoring easily from first base. Noel V. Marte, the ninth red to come to the plate this inning. Kyle Nicholas is up in the Pirate bullpen. Reds have amassed three straight two out hits. Down and in. Well, Steer has stretched his hitting streak to eight. Marte at ten in a row that's tied for the tops by any red on the year. Our medical mutual five star report. Marte matches the Matt McLean mark set in the early stage of his Reds tenure. McLean, by the way, playing a triple A today and tomorrow. If all goes well, he would be back with the club Tuesday as they start their final road trip in Cleveland. Hard ground ball, knocked down to the backhand tree. Oh, no, no, play. The Reds have batted around in a furious five run second. Well, this ball was blistered as well. Triola does a nice job of keeping that ball in the infield. Well, Marte now with an 11 game hitting streak. The on base streak to 17. Friedel, he brought the electricity at the start. Inside the park, Homer began the inning. To center field, Sawinski, a later start, able to glide over. Off with a unique bang, Lark. Yeah, TJ Friedel with the base hit down the right field line, thinking double, maybe triple. Uh uh. That's an inside to Parker. We know TJ Friedel can fly. He has six of his eight triples in this stadium. But he just did something that no Red had done in over a decade. An inside the park homer, and it came at home to boot. Connor Phillips watched for a long time as Friedel sparked the five run surge in the second. Pumps a strike to Bay. It was a 20 minute break for Phillips. Bay at base hit to steal a run scored last night. Swing and miss, ball gets by. Bay races down. No chance for Stevenson. That's six strikeouts for Phillips, but the speedy Bay is on. Scored strikeout wild pitch.
Williams. Strike one. Also want to give a special hello to Bob Sherlock, an official scorer for almost a decade here at Reds games. Friendly hello from the stadium. We know you're watching. Howdy, Bob. Bay, a talented base dealer. In the air, routine center. Brief word now from Academy Sports and Outdoors. Palacio swept his first time. Fouled away. Jim Day, when did big leaguers first know that Connor Phillips had that kind of life on his heater? First live batting practice in spring training at Goodyear. He had come over in the trade, and for many, it was the first look at him. They had called minor leaguers up. To the major league side to get some major league hitters some live ABs and it was after that first session there were two hitters in particular that came out and said man that's a fastball second one said that's some late life on the fastball they knew right away that he had special stuff. Just fought foul by Palacios. Bay 24 steals, a team high, caught just seven times. Very light lead held on. And throughout this time, Stuart Fairchild. Stretching out the quads and right. Haven't been a ton of balls in play. Foul back. Joel. You did not react at all. That ball was <laughs> close to me, Joel. <laughs> That ball had to be 20 feet away from me. <laughs> and you did not move. He did boogie the other day. <laughs> he did. And he's got another dance to come. Popped up. Two down. So the next time the music comes on, does he bring it even bigger or does he do do nothing? What do you think? Well, if we talk about it, I think he does nothing. Yeah. I think perhaps whatever we expect, he does the opposite. <laughs> so if we wanted the dance, we should expect nothing. That's right. Yeah. And if we say nothing. <laughs> <laughs> He's just shaking his head at us. <laughs> Ryan Reynolds has walked on four. Strike one. He had the Batman thing going on yesterday, though. Yeah. Yeah, there was a definite Adam West, Cesar Romero kind of vibe. We're watching the game, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> We're also watching you, Joel. Yeah. We gotta be ready in case the United Nations is turned into powder or there's a shark and we need repellent. So there you go. <laughs> 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 
Oh, two. To De La Cruz, spears it out of the sky. A perfectly timed leap with full extension. A little go go gadget arms. Just keep going and going and going. Tickets with the biggest savings and exclusive benefits. Get a season ticket membership. Plans start at just 13 games, including access to opening day. Call 513 765 7500 today. Ohio's own Kyle Nicholas is in. Yeah, from Ball State. 24 years old, Kyle Nicholas. He's a three pitch pitcher. Fastball, curveball, and a slider. First pitch hammered by Fairchild. One hop to the wall. He shoots to second. A standing double. Reds Rockets early tonight. Yeah, we've seen some very aggressive swings and guys swinging early and hitting the ball hard. Want to see that same kind of swing that we saw from Ellie De La Cruz from the right hand side on that single to hit to right center field. Love to see that short, compact swing from him from the left side. Up and in. He singled, stole second, stole third, later scored. Up and in. Slider down. Now Nicholas attended Ball State, grew up just south of Akron, went to Jackson High School. And gets a half hearted, weak wave on the slider down. India has walked. He has bounced to third. And Nicholas drafted by the Marlins. Well, that came in the shortened 2020 draft. He got traded in the Jacob Stallings deal, November of 21. Bounces that one home. The mask flip tie by Rodriguez. He holds Fairchild to second. Nicholas comes from an athletic family. His dad, a baseball player at Youngstown State for the Penguins. Up and in. And his uncle, very well known for those that follow football, Todd Blackledge. Penn State Nittany Lion, longtime commentator on major national college football games.
Just off the plate away, second walk to India. Senzel aboard twice, base hit and RBI fielder's choice. He has come around a couple of times. Strike. To right. Palacios tagged from second. Fairchild claims third. Singled his last time, a ball smothered by Bay in the outfield grass. Came around to score, he's also struck out. Way outside. Now the Reds wrap up this series tomorrow. It'll be two in Cleveland, three in St. Louis, off days between both series. Cleveland hosting Baltimore tonight and getting no hit. They were through five. John Means, one walk, one hit batter. That is hit well to left. Deep retreat over the head of Reynolds. Fairchild scores. India to third. 35 doubles for Spencer Steer. It is a 9 0 Cincinnati lead. Spencer Steer does such a nice job of recognizing off speed, maintaining his balance, and he just continues to hit. Very impressive. It's 35th double in the season. More doubles than any other rookie in the big leagues. And Cardacio and Strand, an opposite way homer, and an opposite way broken bat flare hit that knocked in a third run. He's got three ribbies and two plate appearances. Just over the screen, back into the seats. Strike him out. has relied on rookies 15 rookie starts in September the most in the big leagues and I'm telling you John when that happens that's not a pennant contending team it's normally the teams that have the prospects just come up because the season is lost these guys have been so instrumental to the success 
of the team at this level and have been incredibly impactful and so well prepared. So fun to be able to watch this. O2 struck him out. That's already seven strikeouts for Phillips, tying his early career high. Yeah, I think with this kind of lead, Connor Phillips can go out there and obviously throw the fastball, but he can experiment, if you will, with other pitches to see if he can induce a ground ball here or there. Start a breaking ball off the outside part of the plate, break it off to see if you can get a swing on a chase with two strikes, which is what he just did. I had a chance to host a uh, season ticket member Q&A that Phillips was a part of, along with Sam Mall the other day. And there were some excellent questions, and one of them to both pitchers was what's your primary focus this offseason whenever this year ends what are you going to try to accomplish before next year starts and both said the same thing Four and pitch walk add refine the changeup you know, Philip said that's his most recent addition and he confesses very much a work in progress. And Sam Mall said something similar that you know, he wants to make sure change up is a bigger part of his repertoire next year. Strike one on Triolo who was flying to right. You know, last offseason Derek Johnson held a bit of a change up you at Vanderbilt. And had several Reds pitchers out to for some introduce, for some work on a changeup. What's old is new again. We're seeing two seam fastballs from some guys. There, there's no universal cure all or fix all or ultimate weapon for a pitcher. But the simplest things add up right and changing speeds if you can do it cleanly and command is one of the simplest ways to execute and that's the key the key is to have a pitch that looks like the fastball that isn't the fastball and that will be your change up fastball arm speed but because of the grip takes away all the steam and there's your change up and it's really hard to learn to throw a change up. Well, we've got a few guys in this organization. One comes to mind, Mario Soto, who is one of our chopper up the middle. De La Cruz coming in hard. Trouble on the transfer. Base hit. One of our pitching coordinators, Mario Soto, has one of the greatest in the history of the game. I'm sure he can help a few guys here and there. Ali De La Cruz playing downhill. He had to catch that ball with one hand. If he can catch that ball with two hands, he can go up right into his throw. See the little bobble right there. That's kind of a do or die. Rodriguez fouls away, strike one. He is struck out. The strikeout against Rodriguez earlier in the game. We saw him throw two heaters and then go to the breaking ball, go soft, Let's see if he does that again. Fastball connects, strike three. Career high, eight strikeouts for Phillips. Maybe caught him looking for that breaking ball this time. 
two strikes on him last time he goes breaking ball this time two strikes on him he goes with the heat. Rivas is struck out up and away. Yeah, there's an awesome piece in the Sports Illustrated vault detailing how Mario Soto went from so so to a great pitcher as part of the headline the grab and it, it details specifically for him when things changed with the changeup. Now he broke his elbow missed 1974 volleyed some between AAA and the big leagues. Reds were a little thin on pitching for stretches in those later 70s years. He was probably brought up at a time when he wasn't as effective. And it was late 1978. He said, That's when I finally got the changeup going. Swing and a miss. He specifically cited, I was pitching in Atlanta, up 6-4 in the eighth, bases loaded, two outs. Dale Murphy up, great hitter from that era. Johnny Bench kept calling for fastballs and sliders. I kept shaking them off. He called for the changeup. I struck out Murphy on a perfect pitch, and that was the crystal moment. He worked on it in winter ball and a major weapon from that point forward. Yep. And I, I think that's something that is obvious but often overlooked. Because you're in the big leagues does not mean you're a finished product. In fact, the exact opposite because of how hard this level is. There'd be no greater truth than what's happening here in Cincinnati right now with all these young guys. If that's the case, there's no more teaching, there's no more growth for some of these 21 year old kids that are here right now. Definitely not the case. And players themselves, everyone wants to get better. They want coaching. They want to get better. They want to have access to this information. You've got a very limited window. You take as in much in as much as you can during that time. Play as long as you can. Try to be as good as you can be. Little flare. Falls in front of Sinzel. Round of third. Sawinski scores. Triolo up to second. It's 9 1. We've seen a lot of power in this game, but you can see right there a little chip gets it done as well. Bay struck out but reached on a wild pitch his first time. Ball one. I think that right there was that changeup. Now Soto had double digit mile per hour difference between his fastball and changeup for Phillips. That's a four to six mile an hour difference right now. But when your main building block is his excellent fastball it helps you out quite a bit. It does. Just misses four pitch walk bases loaded. So he has walked three and each of those on four pitches. Here's Derek Johnson. Brief word now from Miami Valley Gaming. You can pack light on your next trip to Miami Valley Gaming. As long as you've got your lucky Buckeye. I mean, that's not what we normally dance, but I just thought at the finish there'd be a little sky punch. Joel's, Joel's looking the other way. He is. He's busy. Oh, he's working. Yeah. I, I asked him to look something. He's a very kind man. And he helps me sometimes. Another beautiful night in Cincinnati. 
Only one home game left on the regular season after tonight. Can't believe we're here. Yep. And Williams is fly to center, bases loaded. A run in, two down. Weakly grounded. Steer on the charge. Tags his man. Toyota hit and win sign during tonight's game. Brian Schneider from Milford, Ohio, wins this brand new built in the USA 2023 Tundra on display at GABP. 9 1 Reds. Stevenson, solo homer, two run double, check swing appeal, ball one. Count level. Stevenson takes the lead off walk. Well, two walks for Nicholas. Now Marte. Hit the ball hard off the backhand of Triolo at third for a base hit. He's also flying to center. His batting average at a crisp clean 300. Chop to third. And he kicks foul. No good and well. You try to field this ball, you have no chance to throw that runner out. So Triola does the right thing. Got to stay close to it because if it stays fair. That run on first base could possibly come to third. Chopped again to Triolo. Second one. Not in time. Our StatCast 3D powered by Google Cloud. Look at the flight of T.J. Friedel on his inside the Parker. Yeah, at some particular point, you look at that third base coach and say, oh, he said to go. Saw a little burst of speed and just maintained. And That's nice. The detail. How about that? The celebration by Friedel reenacted by the animation. Uh, by the way, to tack on to Statcast, his home run traveled 121 feet. <laughs> I'll take it all day long. He flies to center. 
as the final out of that five run second. I was led off by his epic trip around the bases. Double play. Or holiday party, a major league field hosted at GABP. Choose from several great areas throughout the park. For details, reds.com slash events. 9-1 Reds. Top of the order, Palacios. He has struck out, popped out. Old friend Dowry Moretta stands in the Pirate bullpen. Swing and miss. Well, the no-no in Cleveland is done. Andres Jimenez, seventh inning, two-out homer, spoils the no-no try for John Means. The Oriole ace who had Tommy John in September 22. It's only his third big league start since April of 22. You wonder if at some point there may be a World Series rematch down the line Reds and Orioles two very talented very young teams on the rise up the middle kicked on the mound beyond the dive of De La Cruz well struck right up the middle just out of the reach of Delhi De La Cruz I want to see him catch that ball fully extended and then see what happens. A lot more athleticism out there you can see without the shift. Guys have to range left and right. He's got plenty of range that's for sure. And yeah, not just to his left and right but perhaps to low orbit. We saw him that. Yeah he's got some vertical. It's a nice play that ended the third. Strike on Reynolds, who has walked, and he had the ball taken away by the leaping De La Cruz. Nice pitch. Check swing appeal held up and the minor leagues Phillips struck out as many as 13 men a couple of times. They did it once a couple of years ago in September 21 and last year in mid May both came at Abel. Also struck out 13 in May of this year. That was a double A. It was after he had been dealt to Cincinnati. Just trying to comprehend that a bit. How many of these Reds, including Phillips, were double A to begin the year? And for Phillips, he had to use that pre tacked ball that was used league wide in the first half of the season. Something he says he did not really care for. Now he uses a big league ball and he's got eight strikeouts and counting. He 
He grew up in Greater Houston. Wants Justin Verlander the most. Bounces one home, full count. For Connor Phillips. That last pitch was a breaking ball, but this is what he's done. It's been a nice combination of fastball and breaking ball for the punch out, throwing it in and down and into those right left handed hitters. Climbing the ladder, challenging guys. Strike one on Key Brian Hayes, who has whiffed twice. Jim Day, what's Matt McLean been up to on rehab tonight? Well, his first at bat was a line drive base hit. Maybe we want to just end the rehab there. <laughs> Calling back, but he's scheduled to play five to seven innings tonight, seven to nine tomorrow, and hopes that they can get him in Cleveland. He is one for two overall tonight. You know, with the bleaky injury like that, and I was talking to Matt about it, it's not necessarily when he swings and makes contact. It's when he swings and misses. And that's when you have to decelerate the bat without contact obviously being made. And that's where you feel it the most. And that's what he told me he felt it the most. So swinging and making contact is good, but hopefully swinging and missing, he doesn't feel it. So Winsky has walked, scored, struck out. The last red I can remember dealing with something like that was Jesse Winker. That was in the later stage of 21. And that Reds team had made a good run and a couple of key injuries. Tyler Naquin got hurt. Wade Miley near the tail end of the year. And Winker tried to come back after sitting for a stretch. And I think it was his first AB that he. He felt something at the plate and that's where hopefully these rehab games go cleanly from McLean. He can get multiple reps and perhaps learn more indeed from a swing and miss than he does even from a hit. Of course he, he can swing and miss and then hit the next pitch. Oh he can. That's okay. How will David Bell use him. What position will he be at. Where will he be in the lineup? Center field, Friedel. Good read. BP tomorrow, final family Sunday, presented by Kloster Bit of Bakery. Kids 14 and younger in attendance receive a red sticker sheet from Chick-fil-A. While supplies last, get tickets now. Reds.com slash tickets. 9-1. Reds, an authoritative lead in the fifth. Just had a visit in the booth by the original number 44, Eric the Red. Eric Davis in town. Looking great too. Always good to see Boogie. You talking about coordinated. He's got the shoes, the jewelry, the outfit. Always has it going on. Former Red Dowry Moretta in. Fairchild has hit the ball hard twice. He has lined a short, doubled, and scored. Eric Davis is still around quite a bit with this Reds organization. Yes, he is. At the end of the season, I'll be going out to Instructional League out in Arizona. Eric will be out there for that. 
he's a coordinator so he he's a he goes around and he sees the players during the season making the stop at all the different franchises he's in town for some organizational meetings. Fairchild down on strikes. Very much involved. And a connection with this man who wears the same number that Davis did. De La Cruz is singled, stolen second and third, and scored. He's also struck out. So he really got fooled on that last breaking ball, his last at bat for the strikeout. His first at bat with two strikes. He lofted a line drive hitting right handed. He lofted a line drive to right center field. When you get a guy like this with this kind of talent, it'd be a great question for Eric Davis because he had this kind of talent. If you can get him to cut down and just do the small things. And I think the ceiling is just it's unlimited. When you see Eric working with the young rising Reds, where do you see some of those biggest impacts? I think the biggest thing is mindset. You know, obviously the X's and O's, everyone physically has their capabilities or limitations, if you will. But I think the thing that Eric imparts mostly on players is a mindset. It's a it's a it's how you approach you know how you approach I talk a lot about getting in position to hit mm -hmm. Eric talks a lot about the mental approach to the game kind of how you should think about certain situations that's how he that's how he helped me I was in the big leagues and Eric Davis you know he imparted plenty of wisdom on me talked to me about playing with a sense of urgency talked to me about playing with a, a different kind of killer mentality as opposed to a mentality of just being grateful for being there kind of attacking mentality and I see when he works with players I, I, I think that's the biggest impact that I see when I ask them what would you take from that time with Eric more about the mindset and so many Reds greats that have lived it that have that experience to third Triolo Reds go in order cast is presented by authority of the Cincinnati Reds and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Reds. Strong showing for the Reds and Connor Phillips. Gets a first pitch strike on Triolo. Five innings, nine strikeouts. What have you seen from Phillips? Yeah, he's been super aggressive, much like the last time out against the Twins. Throwing the fastball and that breaking ball for a strike early. Up the middle, skips to center. He's worked ahead of hitters. I love his mound presence. He's got a kind of a downhill approach. Really getting after balls. There's the damage he did tonight. It's been that sweeper. But the four seam fastball. Seen him on a couple guys go to that four seam fastball for strike three. And then next time up, go with two strikes on him, change it up a little bit, and go to the sweeper for the third punch out strike. He did that a couple times to Rodriguez. He's pitched effectively and I think he's had a really nice pitch mix. A sweeper by the way from what I understand in Pittsburgh common word used for vacuum cleaner. So when that term for that kind of breaking ball was getting introduced every time it would be set on their air our counterparts next door to a few doors down would have to do a deeper explanation. It has nothing to do with a vacuum. It's the type of breaking pitch.
Alex Young just got up in the Reds bullpen. Lefty on deck, lefty in the hole. Up the middle. Back to back hits. Young warm Stevenson out for a chat. The left handed Rivas ready to dig into the plate. Here comes David Bell. And Phillips at 99 pitches. Another step forward for the rookie Connor Phillips tonight. David Bell makes the move. Career high, nine strikeouts. Phillips leaves with a 9 1 lead. Skyline Chili called to the bullpen. It's baseball on Bally Sports Ohio, is brought to you by your local Toyota dealer. Visit buyatoyota.com. Toyota, let's go places. And by Tri Health. Healing begins with a doctor who hears you. Learn more at tryhealth.com slash be healed. The other pitchers coming up to Phillips. Congratulating him on five plus career high nine strikeouts. He leaves with a 9-1 lead. Now the book is still open, but big steps forward again for Phillips. Back to back strong outings in the big leagues. Alex Young. Very impressive. Connor Phillips. Alex Young, last time we saw him, he was in the Minnesota game or the series on Tuesday. In that game, he gave up a bomb. You know, going down the stretch, David Bell's going to need all of his relief pitchers, and I know it's been a long year. But when these young pitchers give us four or five innings of competitive baseball, dominant baseball from Connor Phillips today, we're going to need these bullpen guys to come in and be able to shut down the offense. And that has not necessarily been the case recently. So in a game like today, give Alex Young a chance to go out there. Work out whatever kinks he can and bring this thing home for us. One, two. Rivas chops it to first. Backhand steer takes it himself. Triolo to third. Rodriguez up to second. I loved how as Phillips was getting congratulated in the dugout in sequence it's Abbott it's Williamson it's Green that are not only encouraging their teammate but you know they're watching they're engaged left on left against Bay it realized now with an off day to come Monday an off day that splits the Cleveland and St. Louis series. It's a four man rotation. Those are the men that you're riding with from now until a possible postseason berth. And within that possible postseason berth. Yeah. Very unique situation with this organization and all these young pitchers. Not that it has not happened before, but in a pennant race, you don't see it like this. Lofted to right center. That's down. One run scores. Triolo home. Rodriguez stops side at third for Mike Ribello. Bay and RBI hit 9 2. Juan Bay, you can see him just extend his arms. It's a 
some good bit of hitting. First pitch, De La Cruz on the fly. How low can you go? Strike one on Palacios, who has singled. He's one for three. And De La Cruz with his own version of what the twin center fielders did to the Reds, right? Try to hit one over top. He went up and got it. Try to hit one down below. He went down and got it. And De La Cruz has had some defensive down moments in the last few weeks. So he's had a couple of you know, not routine plays that he's made tonight. Well hit to right. Rodriguez scores. Scoop by Fairchild. Throw in cut by India. First to third bay. 9 3, and that'll close the book on Phillips. So he finishes with three runs in this five plus. Reynolds 0 for 2, a walk on 4. Soft liner to a leaping day, the Cruz, and a strikeout looking, the ninth and final strikeout for Phillips. In the dirt. Fairchild back. That's got carry. That is gone. 23rd homer for Reynolds. That's a three run shot. Just like that, it's a three run game. A center cut fastball elevated for Reynolds. He gets extended. And the ballpark is not going to hold it. Fernando Cruz just now gets up in the bullpen as Derek Johnson comes out for a conversation. Brief word now from First Financial Bank. Earn it, save it, grow it with First Financial Bank. Boost your savings with a high money market rate or CD rate. Visit bankatfirst.com or stop by today. First! Key Brian Hayes 0 for 3, couple of strikeouts. He is lined to right. But the tone in the building has changed significantly on that swing.
snaps in the left handed Sawinski on deck. Seven of the Reds runs coming with two outs. Five of the Pirates RBIs with two outs. India. What had been a 9 nothing demolition is a three run game. Goes deep. It hits. And Senzel stands in even with the right hander on the mound. Dowry Moretta. Strike one. Appeal, he went 0 and 2. Struck him out on three. And three strikeouts for Moretta. Steer a couple of hits. Called a ball. Popped up. Our spectrum replay the back to back bombs by the Reds, two down, first inning. Now the boys came out swinging the bats and hit some really long, hard shots. Christian and Carnacion Strand on this ball, it was just bludgeoned. Then followed up by Tyler Stevenson, a hanging breaking ball that he crushes to left center field. For CES, later a broken bat, RBI hit, and a strikeout. Two for three, nine. Now remember, Moretta was dealt by the Reds to the Pirates for Kevin Newman. His ERA was in the low threes in the later stage of July, but he missed gaps of time and has had some poor showings and his limited opportunities from the tail end of July to down. Check swing appeal. He did not go. Cruz continues to warm in the Reds pen. Backhand Triola from Bentney. Out. Hand up from David Bell. Ball appears to be there. The Reds are going to challenge. Most of the Pirates came off Cincinnati the field. Cincinnati is challenging the out call at first base. In fact, Fernando Cruz sprinted in for the bullpen. He was two thirds of the way in the outfield grass, nearly to the dirt. I guess the question is when does he secure this baseball? 
can't tell from this angle. Well, Cruz is slowly walking back to the Reds bullpen. Getting a look at the angle from the inside fair view down the line on the big board. So Moretta goes back out to the mound. Andy Rodriguez, by the way, is due up next inning, the pirate catcher. Not sure if he already started taking his gear off or not. Moretta standing there with nobody to throw to. He is the only pirate on the field. It's just him. And here comes Rodriguez gear on. So even if they lose the challenge, they made Rodriguez work a bit because I assume he had some of it off and now it's all on. After the review, the call in the field is confirmed. The runner is out. Cincinnati will lose their challenge. Get ready for what happens next. MLB postseason begins October 3rd. Go to MLB.com slash postseason for the full schedule. Fernando Cruz enters. Fernando Cruz has been on an absolute tear. He has not allowed a run in any of his last five appearances. And he struck out six, make it eight of his last nine batters he's faced. Six in a row, his last six. It's been that fastball split combination. You see last night, four punches and an inning in the third. He threw 21 pitches, 13 strikes, and he had four strikeouts. He made the most of those strikes. You know, the strikeout run spills back to his game as an opener. That was the middle matchup against the Twins. Just missed. Appeal held up. Foul. Now something that Jim broke down as we came over for the game lark, the profound power the Pirates have shown in just their last three games. It's been a good couple of weeks for Pittsburgh, but they showed their offense in a dramatic fashion. The last two games to beat the Cubs took that series. They showed it last night with four solo homers. They showed it in that five run sixth to once again to make this a game. Held up. Sawinski leads the Pirates with 25 home runs. Trying to get it in on his hands. Sawinski singles. Triolo, a couple of hits, a run scored.
slug to left. That's off the wall. Sawinski can run. Stop sign at third. Throw goes to second. Triolo double, second and third. Nobody out. And there is rapid stirring in the Reds pen. Jabot loosens. The bullpen phone rings. Well, you talked about the power of this team. Triolo hits his ball hard enough. Just a little top spin keeps them in the ballpark. And the Pittsburgh Pirates are showing you the tenacity that you want to see for a team that has only pride to play for at this particular point in the season. Elevated to Rodriguez. We saw a windmill from Jabot, but it's Lucas Sims that was summoned by the phone call. And he has just started warming. It's only a couple of warm up tosses in. Two and oh. It's been a lot of contact by the Pirates up the middle. Reds pinch the pull side, India and Steer. Three and O. Oh. Bases loaded. There is a similar feel to last night, but this game did not start in anywhere near the same fashion. Stevenson out for chat with Rivas two up. Bell up the step slowly, giving Sims a touch more time. Single, double, walk. Tying runs are on. Go ahead, run bats for the Pirates. You can see Cruz pleading his case, saying, please, please, please. He hands off the ball. Lucas Sims gets the call. Base is loaded. Nobody out. Now a tightrope walk. The 9 0 lead sliced to three. Base is loaded. Nobody out. Lucas Sims. We saw Lucas Sims in yesterday's ball game. He came in to pitch two thirds of an inning. He did walk. A hitter, but no damage. Alfonso Rivas up and away. RBI single, a strikeout, a ground out for Rivas tonight. Slider strike. Hard foul.
Up and away, full count. Uh, thank goodness for netting. Plinko down just below the camera position. Over first base hit. Sawinski scores. Triolo green light. Booted briefly by Fairchild. Wave is on. Triolo scores. Rodriguez to the plate. He scores. The lead is gone. It's nine unanswered by the Pirates. Rivas clears the bases. It's tied. Like a hanging slider right there. And Rebus just stays right on it. That ball down in the corner, you can see Fairchild has trouble coming up clean with it. Allowing Rodriguez to score all the way from first base without a throw. Now the go ahead run at second. At Bay, who could bunt, has the corners drawn in. Check swing foul, strike one. He has singled, scored, walked, and reached on strikeout wild pitch. A disastrous turn of events. There's the bunt foul. With the Reds in dire need of every win they could get, a gaudy nine run advantage has just evaporated. One and two. Center field, Friedel. Makes the grab, Rivas tag. He gets third with one out. So now Williams infield in. Oh, and one. He is fly to center, bounce to first, line to short. Consecutive slider strikes. Who would have thunk this in a game the Reds led by nine in the seventh inning? Alexis Diaz is up and throwing in the Reds' bullpen. Connects, strike three. Well, Lucas Sims executing the slider right there. Nice job by Tyler Stevenson framing that pitch. Now Palacios, couple of hits, an RBI run scored. Floated to India on a hop. The lead is gone. For Reds Live, the post game show with this game concludes. Brought to you by your local Toyota dealers. There's going to be a lot to dissect no matter how this plays out. Tied at nine. Let's see how the offense responds. 
It's more than done its part on the night. And that includes Tyler Stevenson, a home run, two run double, a walk. But Pirate pitching championed by Moretta has retired seven Reds in a row cleanly. Eight. The last red to reach was Noel V. Marte, but that was not a fielder's choice. The last clean reach was Stevenson's walk to begin the fourth. Don't see that every day. Thankfully, it looks like Rodriguez is fine. The Pirates have relished playing the role of spoiler. They did it briefly to the Brewers in the early stage of the month. They did it to the Cubs just last series. And boy, have they done it so far tonight to the Reds. Clips for a strike. Lefty Jose Hernandez is up in the Pirate pen. Alexis Diaz continues to warm for David Bell. It's Reynolds, Hayes, and Sawinski. You could argue their three best bats, best power in succession. It's due up in the eighth. And that's where tonight has all the markings of being managed by David Bell like it's a game seven to have Diaz up now tells you what this game means. Tough backhand Triolo. That's a heck of a play. Yeah, he's made some really good plays swinging the bat. Well good player play multiple positions. This is not a routine play. Takes his time and sets his feet. Strong arm. And Marte is an above average runner who hustles hard. Now with the lefty TJ Friedel do up. Looks like Derek Shelton's going to make his own move. Hernandez ready. Moretta did darn well against his former club. He sure did. his reception in the dugout a spirited trip through a collapse for the Reds a comeback for the Pirates the Cincinnati edge at one point rested at nine it is gone TJ Friedel had the high point of the night and inside the park Homer he faces lefty Jose Hernandez we saw Jose Hernandez in last night's ball game. He came in late in the ball game yesterday and inherited a couple of runners. Left him out there. Three pitch pitcher. Slider fastball and a changeup. Two and oh. Inside. <laughs> Call to strike. Friedel's family from the greater Pittsburgh area. He has more homers against the Pirates than any one foe. And a man with speed is on with a walk.
Reds haven't had a hit since Steers two out RBI double in the third. That made it nine zip. Fairchild has doubled scored. He's one for three. Friedel 25 steals second most on the Reds. Violation. That goes on Hernandez. Four one. Right-hander Colin Selby is up in the Pirate pen. Check swing. He went. No appeal. I would assume Derek Shelton went with Hernandez beyond just Friedel. He'd rather probably see Fairchild against him than David Bell go to a lefty bat off the bench than against a righty. And if it came down to it, I think he'd rather he faces De La Cruz batting right handed. Friedel breaks. Pitch called a strike. Throw down. Safe. Friedel steals second. Good throw right here with TJ Friedel. See, Ji Juan Bay, when he catches this ball, looked like he has to take his glove up to pick that short throw. You want to try to catch that ball with your glove going down, get to that runner much quicker. Decent lead for Friedel off second. Struck him out. The Reds baseball on Valley Sports Ohio is brought to you by Jake Sweeney, serving the tri state for over 100 years. And by Western and Southern, put their financial strength behind you. A setting not seen in some time. Now, last year there were stretches. Alexis Diaz would be employed against the best wave of the opponent before the ninth. Hunter Strickland was closing games most of the campaign. But tonight, non save situation. Tied at nine. The toughest Pirates hitters in the eighth against Diaz. Obviously speaks to what David Bell feels is a critical game to win as I think we all do here in Reds land. That got Reynolds. Go ahead run is on. That rear foot just nicked it. Key Brian Hayes 0 for 4. Couple of strikeouts, line to right, bounce to second. India raises his glove and he's in pain. Barehanded by Fairchild, Reynolds up to second. India slow to get up. Here comes David Bell and athletic trainer Sean McQueenie. Well, Indy gets full of extension here.
India has consistently displayed toughness. He stays in. But an ominous start to this eighth. A grazed batter. A hit that just eludes a glove. Now Sawinski was singled walk scored twice. Pirates have had their first two men on in three consecutive innings. They scored eight runs between the last two frames. Inside. He dialed up the heat there. His first fastball was only at 92. The last one at 95. Two strikes. Good block by Stevenson. Count levels. That bounces to right center. Wave on for Reynolds. Fairchild from right. Throw goes toward third. Reynolds scores. It's 10 unanswered runs by the Pirates. Number 10, Brian Reynolds crosses. The Reds face their first deficit. It's 10 9. Yeah, breaking ball on the outside part of the plate. Sawinski. These Pirates have shown a lot of grit and determination. And Got to bounce back. Triolo first pitch lifted to deep right. Twisting corner Fairchild over that's in the seats. And Lark before that pitch Hayes and Sawinski both took huge leads and their heads swiveled. They seem to be looking at each other. I think they were on the verge of going and Diaz delivered quicker than they could go. And we saw the twins execute a double steal at a fulcrum moment in that series. And I also think tonight uh, we have seen a bullpen that has been one of the strengths and one of the consistent rocks of this Reds team show its wear a bit. Sent to right. Wave is on. Fairchild from right. Throw to the plate. It's there. The tag. He's out. Fairchild the assist. They cut down Hay, Sawinski backside to third. Nice job by Stuart Fairchild charging this ball with a strong throw. Taking Tyler Stevenson right into that line, that third base line. And keep Ryan Hayes, who runs pretty well, out easily at the dish. Keeps it a one run game. Andy Rodriguez. He's aboard twice, a single, a walk. He has scored twice. And this Reds pen has thrown a lot of innings. These relievers have overwhelmingly been healthy and available and performed. And tonight, I think that work on the campaign it catches up at some point. Sky to center. David Cruz. Not even a thought to tag from third. 
I wonder if it were tied or if they were trailing would he have tested De La Cruz. Yeah you see who's going out there you're saying okay who's going to catch it. If Friedel catches it I'll think about it but De La Cruz no chance. But you're also looking to see how that infielder catches the ball if he's behind it. Rivas. That's down barehanded by Friedel. Strong throw in. Sawinski scores. It's a heck of a job by Friedel to back up. Triolo over to third. It's a second run in on the inning. It's 11 and 9. Rivas came up with a big double with the bases loaded earlier. This time splitting the gap. Nice try by Stuart Fairchild and nice job by T.J. Friedel backing it up or another run scores. Now Bay that skips dirt and that's where bluntly tonight much like Friedel backed up Fairchild the, the offense has to back up the pitching tonight and that's the good news for the Reds it's the eighth they have six outs to play with. Can Diaz get out of this inning and keep it a two run deficit? To left center. Triolo scores. Booze pours down. Rivas windmill. De La Cruz no throw. Head first slide. It's 13 to 9. It's 13 unanswered runs by the Pirates. Well, Alexis Diaz comes in the ball game and you can see he's running on fumes as well and just a tough time for the bullpen to be struggling collectively. But what else can David Bell do. He's got to have somebody go out there and get some outs and he's trying everything he can. Guys have got to get it done. Derek Law. It was 9 0 Reds, it's 13 9 Pirates. Derek Law enters. Last six appearances, Derek Law, some 1 4 2 ERA, and David Bell is desperately looking for someone in that bullpen to stop the bleeding. Hopefully it's Derek Law. Man at second two down Williams first pitch swing and miss. Cutter gets strike one Williams 0 for four. Pirates with 13 runs on 16 hits. Williams the only man without a knock in their nine tonight. Bay goes down it away throw down a good one tag got him. The Reds need some more under a tsunami of pirate momentum. They have six outs to play with down four runs. Looks like the Pirates are going to challenge them. The call at third is out. Pittsburgh is challenging. Looks like the ball definitely gets there before G1 Bay. And he overslid. Did Marte tag him?
challenge from Derek Shelton. And in the mirror image of what happened with Moretta, it's Law by his lonesome, the only red in between the lines on the field. Stevenson Giron is coming up the steps and back out. After the review, the call on the field is confirmed. The runner is out. Pittsburgh will lose their challenge. Fans, now is the time. Get your 2024 season tickets with the biggest savings and exclusive benefits. Plan started just 13 games, including access to opening day. Call 513-765-7500 today. The untimed sport of baseball. Momentum, a real and fickle thing. From a 9-0 lead to a 13-9 deficit. Colin Selby, the new pitcher, Low to Ellie De La Cruz. 25 year old Colin Selby. Numbers on the season. Three pitch pitcher, fastball slider, and a curveball. Now remember, David Bell has his full bench Benson, Fraley, Votto, Martini, and Bailey. India on deck, but it looks like Martini is on the steps, bat in hand, to hit for Sinzel. Rides in. The Reds need base runners. Away, De La Cruz is on. It's been some time since the Reds have blown a nine run edge. They last blew a nine run lead in a win in 2010. That was in San Francisco. They led 10 1, saw the lead slip away 1 12 to 11. They last allowed a nine run advantage to dissipate in a loss. Nearly two decades ago in Milwaukee in 2004. Low to India, who has walked twice, scored once. That was the Bill Hall squeeze bunt in the 10th inning. At the time, that was the biggest comeback in Brewers history, and it was the Reds' biggest collapse since 1930. John, why are you looking at me when you're talking about this loss that we had? I think you were there that day, <laughs> right? You remember that game? I try to. I tried not to remember. <laughs> that gets by De La Cruz up to second. Takes a berth. Holds there. Wild pitch. If anyone in this booth has point of reference for what this is like to experience. And by no means is loss nor win cemented at this stage. You've lived it. I have. Frustrating is the word. These Reds are not done yet. Three and one. If you're going to draw it up, get De La Cruz on. Allow his mere presence to radiate to the pitcher. Full on India. The Hayes hit that had the first two aboard last inning. 
nicked India's glove. He came up in pain. He is still in the game. Sent to shallow right center. That falls in. Bay and Palacios bumped De La Cruz to third. A little bloop for India. You know, in the hands of Jonathan India, Jihuan Bay at second base and all his speed, he almost gets there. Well, this is how you answer. You get the first two on base. And make some things happen. Nick Martini pinch hits for Nick Senzel. You don't have to get it all back right now, but boy, that would be preferred. Down low. No team in Major League Baseball has more pinch hit homers than the Reds. Nine on the year, including one by Martini, who was a pinch hitter in limited time. 375. He's three for eight. Home run, three ribbons. Chopped to short. Flip for one. Not in time. De La Cruz scores. It's a three run game, man on one out. That high hop to second baseman Ji Hwan Bay. See how he steps back? Allows Nick Martini to get down the line. Good hustle. Spencer Steer. Two hits, an RBI double to run scored tonight. Down a little way. Steer leads the Reds in homers, RBIs, and doubles. He also paces the team by a wide margin in walks. Up and in. Pirates playing a somewhat carefree freelance look of spoiler. Their season essentially decided. They're just trying to finish well. The Reds, the pressure of possible postseason. All that weight on each pitch. Chop to third. That's a tough play. It's bobbled. No play. Steer is on. Tying run backs. That's a base hit. This has been a wacky series. Yeah, we've seen a little bit of everything. That is a fair ball called by Bruce Dreckman. And Triolo would have been better served just to hold this ball and not try to throw it after the bobble. Just hold it. Christian Encarnacion Strand, a career high tying three ribbies. Two run homer, RBI single, two runs scored. Strike one.
to center field, base hit. Martini went home. He scores the deficit to two. Career high, four RBIs for CES. Nice job of hitting right there. You can see the little pause right there in recognition of the breaking ball. That ball laced up the middle. Christian Encarnacio Strand with another great at bat. Ian Jabot now warms in the Reds' pen. A low strike to Stevenson. Aboard three times, a homer, two run double, a walk. Fouled away. Steer above average speed at second. And Cardasio and Strand, the tying run at first, and you pointed out earlier, he is quicker than he looks. You yes. think power first baseman, he can run a bit. He's got a big lead. Bounces home. Is this a challenge idea from the Reds? Or they're they going to pinch run right here. Will Benson. Thank you, Jimmy. A minute bat. Benson comes in to run for Christian Encarnacion Strand. So he's in the DH spot. It doesn't affect the defense. I assume that also means, depending upon the Pirate pitching at the time, they look to hit someone else for Fairchild. Nearly got him. the middle backhand race to the bag got it to first double play Reds get two back we are through eight 13 11. regular season we invite you to join us for Reds live one o'clock from racing player roofing Brandon Williamson gets the non 20 second start 93 strikeouts in what's been a very good rookie campaign. Reds on the wrong side of a 13 to 11 score. We enter the ninth. Some changes for the Reds. Nick Martini and hit for Nick Senzel replaces him at left field. And David Bell goes deeper to his pen. Ian Jabot. I saw Ian Jabot in yesterday's ball game. He pitched two thirds of an inning and gave up three hits and two runs at the blown save in yesterday's game. And he, just like the other guys, put in a lot of work and hopefully he can find it and keep this offense right here. Give us a chance in the bottom of the ninth with this two run deficit. Back to back games, the Reds have used seven pitchers. Williams fly to center bounce to first line to short strikeout looking he has been swing happy and that is strike one on a breaking ball oh and two
It is not David Bednar in the Pirate Pen. Instead, Carmen Majinski is up and warming. He was the next to man, next to last man used yesterday. Appeal, he held up. And Bednar had pitched in each of the last couple of games. He went yesterday in this opener. He went in Chicago a couple of days ago in that finale. Just slow. Come out. Bunt yank back. Palacios two hits at RBI a run scored. Steer. Two down. Brief message now from Academy Sports and Outdoors. Ryan Reynolds, a two run homer. He's also been aboard on walk and hit by pitch. He's on base streak, stretched to 22 tonight. Reds bottom nine Marte, Friedel, Fairchild. I would assume we would see either Jake Fraley or Joey Votto hit for Fairchild. Timeout for Palacios. And I'm not sure if Bednar is a backup plan for the Pirates. He's only pitched on three straight days once all year. That was in early June against the Cardinals. One and two. He might only be an option if and when the game were to go to extras. Appeal. Two and two. Opposite way, Martini. Can the Reds rally? Down two. Bottom nine. Marte will get it started. An edge to the doldrums of 13 unanswered allowed. The Reds scratched out two last inning. They have blown a nine run lead. Their largest blown lead lost this year. Seven. Excuse me, in all of Major League Baseball this year was seven by Seattle on April the 11th. Now should the Reds fail to rally, this would be the biggest blown lead in a loss by any team this year. And Joey Votto was going to stand in to begin the inning and hit for Marte against the new pitcher. It's Carmen Majinski. 
So Majinski in the eighth inning last night's ball game. He threw a perfect eighth inning. He's a four pitch pitcher. Fastball at 96 miles an hour, slider, change up in a cutter. And who knows what the future holds for Joey Votto. Most are standing. On a skip, it's by Bay. Votto's on time run bats. Joy wastes absolutely no time and rips this ball right at G1 Bay. It takes a bad hop on him. Way to get it started. Friedel stands in. Fairchild just got yanked back on deck. Jake Fraley is now in the circle. Triolo on the grass at third. Strike. That's over first. That's a fair ball. Votto through second. Palacios gathers. Stop sign third. It's second and third. The tying runs in scoring position. A double down the line by Friedel. There he is again, TJ Friedel. Situation is never too big for him. Palacio does a nice job going into that corner and digging it out. Jake Fraley to stand in for Stuart Fairchild. He is the winning run at the plate. The Reds 10 walk offs this year that's tied for the most in the majors with the Twins and the Rays. No activity in the pirate pen. One and one. First base open, De La Cruz on deck. Hold the strike. Every game technically counts the same, but the reality is. At this stage of this kind of season, this is baseball without a net. Grounded runners break. Base got it, flipped to first, tall on time. Votto scores, Friedel to third. It's a one run game, the tying run 90 feet away. Saw the exchange there between Votto and Marte. Votto would hit for Marte. That generational moment. Infield drawn in for De La Cruz, who's aboard twice tonight. A single, a walk. He has stolen two bags. He has scored two runs. A 
one one Barely corralled by Rodriguez. The Reds walk offs delivered by rookies. Five of their ten. Only the Brewers have more. Ellie De La Cruz does not yet have a walk off hit. Fly ball could tie the game. Bowl. This is a gotta have it night. It's likely that independently, but underscored all the more when you recognize the lead was nine. Yes. This is a heck of an event. Just off there. De La Cruz has worked double digit pitches. He awaits the 10. Hard foul. What a battle. Struck him out. You just try to keep your balance. You want to try to be patient, but Ledzinski just made the right pitch. The Reds' hopes rest with India. Strike one. Fastball misses. India saw Majinski in the eighth last night. Bounced into a double play that ended that inning. He got a long look again on deck. While De La Cruz battled. Reds down to their last strike tonight. In the air, Bay out, 
Sawinski in the call the catch. A heartbreaking gut punch day. The Reds led by nine. They fall by one. A 13 to 12 day of misery for Cincinnati. One word is just frustrating and boys are trying hard but scored some runs bullpen just let this team down again and it's just that time of season it's just been rough frustrating. Got to win a game tomorrow. What else can you do. Got to win a game tomorrow. As deflating a night as the year has seen felt as the fans just now file out and an odd calm silence fills the stadium. Yeah I think it's more shock than anything. I, you know I feel like it's frustrating as a player you can see the guys downstairs but yeah you, you don't expect to lose a ball game this late in the season when you score 12 and you have a nine run lead. I, I think shock is the word. They'll try to digest it. Reds live. The postgame program is next. 13-12 Pirates.